Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ran into some interesting spam this weekend advertising a fake a licensed version for ESET's Not32 antivirus. Now, antivirus coverage for this particular malware was sort of mixed. However, when I ran it on a standard Windows 10 system, Microsoft's uh, anti malware did pick it up right away once it started running and sort of unpacking itself. But what's, what's sort of interesting is that the web servers uh, being used in order to distribute the malware, those apparently were at least in the couple instances where I've seen this malware, Lassie hard drives. Uh, Lassie is a maker of various USB and portable hard drives and the like, but they also make some of uh, these network storage devices where uh, they are exposed via the internet. And in this particular case, the FTP FTP component on these drives was used to distribute the malware. In addition to this malware, the FTP directory also contained your usual crypto coin miner and a couple of tools that look like brute force tools with short lists of simple passwords. Only about 10 to 20 passwords were listed. So you had your standard admin, admin, one, two, three, four, five, and similar common passwords. And that's what I assume was probably used in order to break into these Lassie network drives. And security researcher James Lee found an interesting same origin policy violation in Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge. Same origin policy essentially is supposed to keep different websites apart. Now, there are of course many reasons why you would like to do this. In this particular case, if you're redirecting to a different website, the receiving website may be able to still access the full URL, including parameters of the website that redirected the user. This of course could then lead to the leak of confidential data from the origin website. Overall, not typically a huge issue. You're not supposed to have any sensitive data on the URL anyway, but still not good that the data is being leaked in this way and certainly could be exploited by the website that you are redirecting to. Microsoft hasn't released a statement regarding this yet, so not clear if there will be a patch. Given that this is not a sort of super serious vulnerability, I would expect Microsoft to release a patch at a future patch Tuesday. Probably a little bit more severe is a vulnerability that was fixed in Apache's HTTP server 2.4, the latest release uh, 2.439 that was released today fixes an interesting privilege escalation vulnerability. Due to this vulnerability, any user that's able to execute scripts within Apache is able to obtain root. Now on a dedicated web server that may not be a big issue. But if you are considering, for example, shared hosting environments where you have various users that are supposed to be isolated from each other's creating websites that are then served by one Apache instance, this could potentially be a problem. And according to mobile security company Lookout, Verizon users were the target of phishing attempts that in particular were tailored for mobile devices. Of course, on a mobile device, it's often easier, for example, to spoof the URL bar. In this particular case, the attackers did register about 50 different domain names that included terms like Verizon Wireless and VC Wireless and the like. So when you 
looked at the domain name in a mobile browser, it was very close to the legitimate Verizon wireless domain name. The goal of this particular campaign was to then obtain users credentials for their Verizon wireless support account, which of course could then later be used in order to take over the accounts or maybe commit some pay call fraud. Lookout didn't state what the final goal was, but that's sort of what typically happens with wireless credentials. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.